Hello everyone, welcome to Provost Park Pass. I'm Amanda, thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to be talking about the top 10 rides you absolutely cannot miss when you go to Disneyland. Before we get started, make sure that subscribe button is clicked. That way you don't miss a video of ours. A lot of exciting stuff is coming up on our channel and we cannot wait to share it with you. And that goes a long way to help us is just clicking that subscribe button. Bada bing, bada boom, super easy. All right, here we go. Now I am super excited to talk about attractions at Disneyland. That's actually one of the main reasons why I go to Disneyland is for the attractions. And so I have gathered 10 rides that you absolutely cannot miss. And I also want your advice and your tips in the comments comments below. So if there's a ride or attraction that didn't make my list, leave it in the comments below. If you have a favorite attraction that you want to say, yes, absolutely, you must ride this ride, leave it in the comments below. I mean, we're here, we're community, we're here to have like the best time at Disneyland ever, right? And so don't be shy. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite rides are, how you like to do Disneyland, anything like that at all. I want to hear from you. All right, should we get started? Let's do it. The number 10 attraction you must ride at Disneyland is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I love Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It is a great introductory roller coaster for children. There aren't any corkscrews or loops or crazy big hills. It's pretty easy going and you can actually fit three people in one row. So if you have a little one that's a little nervous, they can be squished between two adults and feel super, super safe. It's not super fast, but it is thrilling and fun. And the theming for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is, oh, just the wildest ride in the world wilderness. Now, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is, of course, located in Frontierland, and it has some really awesome history and facts that you should check out about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad with our deep dive secrets revealed video up here. But I'll just give you a fun little fact. An awesome thing about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is it was the first roller coaster in the world to be assisted by a computer in the design process, and that completely changed the way that roller coasters are built today. Another cool thing about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is the rocks and the, the landscape, everything was built first. And then the roller coaster track was built through and around it. Usually it's the roller coaster that's built first. And then the theming goes up and around it. But the theming was number one. And the theming for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland was inspired by Bryce Canyon National Park. I love Bryce Canyon. It is so cool. It's otherworldly. You feel like you're on a different planet. And I visited Bryce Canyon with Chris and our son Miles. And it was so crazy being there and seeing it in person and seeing how awesome it is and totally understanding like, oh yeah, this is this is why they built Big Thunder Mountain Railroad being inspired by Bryce Canyon because it's just awesome. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is a fairly popular ride. It's not the most popular ride at Disneyland, but it is included in the Genie Plus option if you want to skip the lines. I say for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, you can wait anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes, even more in the peak season, but it's not the most most heavily visited ride. So you, it's not a ride that you necessarily have to rope drop to get to unless it's number one on your list. If you are in a wheelchair or an ECV, you must transfer to the ride, but a transfer device is available. One of my favorite parts about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is the sound. And if you know what I'm talking about, it's a really unique, distinct, whistle sound. And once you hear it, you can't get it out of your head the rest of the day, but it's very nostalgic. And I love riding Big Thunder Mountain at night. That's especially magical. That's my favorite time to ride Big Thunder. All right, now for the number nine must ride attraction at Disneyland, Jungle Cruise. The number nine must ride attraction at Disneyland is on my list because it was Walt Disney's personal favorite. And so I really feel like this is an attraction you should experience because it's from, it's from, you know, Walt Disney himself. This is an opening day attraction. So there's also a lot of history in this attraction and a lot of that feel good, uh, nostalgic Disney magic. A Jungle Cruise is a very slow moving boat ride. And an interesting thing about Jungle Cruise is anyone can ride it. You don't have to be a certain age or a certain height to be able to ride it. We took our son on Jungle Cruise when he was six weeks old. He was just this little squishy, wrinkly baby, and he was riding Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise takes you through the remote rivers of around the world. And the thing with the Jungle Cruise are the skippers. The skippers really make this attraction because they're hilarious. They have a bunch of different jokes that they say throughout the Jungle Cruise ride. So the whole thing itself 
is like one big joke. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny, especially if you love dad jokes like my husband Chris does, but it's just a cute boat ride. Now, one thing about the boat is it can sometimes be loud. At one point, they often will whip out a little gun and shoot it, poo, and that's pretty loud. However, I've seen them not do that part and skip that part a lot of times if there's really small children or babies on the boat. The Jungle Cruise is located in Adventureland right next to Indiana Jones. The Jungle Cruise is like an average wait time. It's not the most popular ride at Disneyland. People aren't flocking to get to the Jungle Cruise. However, it's not offered in Genie Plus. So definitely keep that in mind when you're planning your day because it's not one that you can purchase Genie Plus or a Lightning Lane to skip the, the line. So if this is high up on your list, you might want to ride it earlier in the day when the wait times are super, super low or during the parades or the fireworks or towards the end of the day. My personal favorite time to ride the Jungle Cruise is at night. There's just something about that feeling of being in the water and it's dark and you're in the jungle and they have a light on the bow and it's it's almost kind of uh, spooky in a way. I mean, not terrifying. It's not going to completely terrify children or anything, but it just has that, that real, it, it almost has that real feel like you are really cruising down the Nile or, or whatever. It's just awesome. Awesome cool things about the Jungle Cruise is they do offer sign language and they also allow you to stay in your wheelchair or your ECV if needed. And again, the Jungle Cruise has no age requirement and no height requirement. Fun for everyone. Ooh, the number eight attraction you cannot miss when you visit Disneyland is Peter Pan's Flight. Peter Pan's Flight is an extremely popular attraction. I mean, it just screams Disney. I mean, it's completely based off of Walt Disney's film, Peter Pan. And you're able to see the beautiful storyline of the boy who never grew up and Wendy. And, and it's just all very nostalgic. This is a fun ride because it's a suspended dark ride. So it truly feels like you're flying like Peter Pan would be flying through the air with that pixie dust of magic. Peter Pan is located in Fantasyland. And the line for this ride gets very, very, very long. So this is something that you definitely want to plan your day around. A really cool thing right now about staying on property at the Disneyland Resort is if you stay at any of the three hotels, you get early entry into the park. You're able to enter Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. And if you go straight to Peter Pan, you're basically going to be able to walk right on. And that is huge with Peter Pan. Peter Pan does not offer a Genie Plus, the lightning lane where you can skip the line. So it's one of those attractions that you just truly have to wait for. Unless again, you're staying on property, you get that early entry and you can go straight straight to Peter Pan and skip the lines. Now, if you want to stay on property at the Disneyland Resort, it is a super magical experience. The hotels there are awesome. We've been able to stay at all three. So if you have questions on any of those hotels, leave them in the comments below. I would love to answer those questions. And we offer the best prices for those hotels through our partner Getaway Today. All you need to do is call 1-855-GETAWAY. Tell them that I sent you. Say, I want to stay on property at the Disneyland Hotel to help beat some of the rides. And then they will take care of the rest for you. Okay, now back to Peter Peter Pan. Let's say you have to wait in line for Peter Pan. That's okay because that line is really cute. There are some interactive elements that you can do in the line. Download the Disney Play app and you can find really cute things. You know, you can light up Tinkerbell and a lamp and, and it's just really, really cute. We have a deep dive secrets revealed to Peter Pan that you can watch up here, but this is just a Disneyland attraction that you should not miss. There is no hide requirement for Peter Pan, but if you're in a wheelchair, you must be able to transfer. Another thing to keep in mind about Peter Pan when you're planning your day on how to ride it, sometimes it will close early to accommodate the fireworks. And so if you're like, okay, I have to ride Peter Pan, just make sure that you're not planning your Peter Pan time around the time of the fireworks and a little bit before. Hi, now time to talk about our number seven must ride attraction at Disneyland. The number seven ride that you absolutely cannot miss when you visit Disneyland is the Disneyland Railroad. The Disneyland Railroad is so classic and it's so magical and it's so historic. You definitely need to take it on a spin around the entire Disneyland Resort. A lot of fun things about the Disneyland Railroad are there are four different stations that you can access this attraction. You access it on Main Street, New Orleans Square, Toontown, and Tomorrowland. You can get on and off at any of those locations. So the Disneyland Railroad is more than an attraction. You can use it to help get from place to place throughout Disneyland. 
And sometimes that can be more fun. You're riding the railroad from point A to point B versus running around the park and trying to get to where you want to go. The Disneyland Railroad has no height requirement. It's fun for all ages. Even little babies can go on the railroad. My only advice with little ones with the railroad is between Tomorrowland and the Main Street Station, you go through dark, dark tunnels and you see scenes of dinosaurs. Now, when our son was really little, that kind of upset him a little bit. I mean, it's not terrifying, but it's just a little bit scary. So that's just something to keep in mind if you have children who are really, really sensitive to dark, loud noises, uh, crashing lightning and thunder, dinosaurs who are dying and, and stuff like that might be a little, it might be a little much. But other than that, the Disneyland Railroad is very relaxing. It's a great place to go and sit and rest your feet if you're really, really tired. And it's also a great place to beat the rain. So if it's an extremely rainy day, I've just sat on the Disneyland Railroad to just warm up and stay dry. And I enjoyed every second of it. The Disneyland Railroad does does have a lot of cool secrets and tips to it. My favorite little secret on the Disneyland Railroad is Indy's doghouse. You really have to watch our video or ride the train and, and search for it. It's, it's my favorite. I love it so much. I look for it every time I'm on the railroad. As far as accessibility with the railroad, the Disneyland app says that guests are able to remain in their wheelchair or their ECV. However, I would check with cast members at each station because each different station has different accessibility options to be able to get onto the train. And the railroad is another attraction that might close early due to fireworks. So keep that in mind when you're planning to ride the railroad during your Disneyland day. Time to talk about the number six attraction you must ride when you visit Disneyland. The number six must ride attraction at Disneyland is Pirates of the Caribbean. I love Pirates of the Caribbean. This one to me just feels so nostalgic. I mean, this is Disney magic. I love it. I could ride Pirates over and over and over. It's an attraction that I could get off and want to get right back in line to ride again. It, it doesn't matter how many times you ride it. It's just going to create all of that Disney magic and all of the feels for you. Now, there are a lot of history and a lot of secrets and a lot of facts about Disneyland's uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. One is it's it's actually better than Disney World's Pirates of the Caribbean. Sorry, Disney World. I love you so much, but Disneyland's is better. And with Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean, one of my favorite facts is when Alice Davies was creating the costumes for Pirates of the Caribbean. She wanted to have two costumes per each animatronic when the original costume started to wear down. Disney said no. And so what she did is she actually secretly ordered more material than she really needed and created two costumes anyways. I mean, that's hilarious. That's so funny to me. I never would have dared to do that. But her little uh, sneakiness actually paid off because after the Pirates of the Caribbean opened, there was a fire and the sprinklers went off and the costumes, many of the costumes were ruined. And Pirates of the Caribbean only had to stay closed for one day because she was able to put her spare costumes right on the pirates. And so now they keep three separate costumes for each of the pirates. And so the, the riot is never going to be shut down due to wardrobe malfunctions. The pirates are covered. They're totally covered. Before Pirates of the Caribbean was created, Walt Disney wanted it to be a walkthrough attraction, but I'm so grateful it's an actual boat ride. It's a ton of fun. Now this is great for the entire family. There's no height requirement to ride Pirates of the Caribbean. And our son was again, six weeks old the first time he rode Pirates of the Caribbean. And, and he did great. He loved it. He did great. It is a dark ride and there are two hills that the boat dives down to, but it's nothing too terrifying. And you might get splashed a little bit. I may have gotten splashed pretty well on Pirates of the Caribbean, but not going to walk off completely soaked. Pirates of the Caribbean is located in New Orleans Square, and this attraction is popular, but it doesn't tend to get super, super, super long lines, unless, of course, it's peak season and the park is just completely packed. I mean, take in mind that most advice that I'm giving you can change. It really just depends on the day, what's going on at Disneyland, if it's raining, if it's the middle of summer, if it's Christmas Eve, anything like that can totally change crowds. It does have two separate lines, and I love watching people get on Pirates of the Caribbean because it they usually just follow the last person. And so I'll be watching both lines and seeing groups and tons and tons of people go into one side of the line and totally missing that, hey, there's a right side to enter as well. So when you enter Pirates of the Caribbean, kind of gauge, all right, which one, like where are most people going, which line seems the shortest, and then pick that one. Don't just follow the crowd because they end up all just following each other. And Pirates of the Caribbean does not have a Genie Plus or a Lightning Lane, so you cannot pay to skip the line for Pirates of the Caribbean. 
And for guests in a wheelchair or an ECV, guests must be able to transfer onto the boat. Oh, yo, oh, a pirate's life for me. Yeah. The number five must ride attraction at Disneyland is Space Mountain. Space Mountain is absolutely fantastic. It's a ride that's really held up the test of time. It's a pretty simple roller coaster. It does not go very fast. It appears to go much faster because of the fans that they use and it's completely in the dark and having that dark effect where you don't know where you're going. There's fans blowing on your face. You just feel like you are cruising through the galaxies. Space Mountain is an extremely popular attraction and the lines can get super, super long. I've waited about 90 minutes for Space Mountain before. Now, again, if you're staying on property, Space Mountain is an attraction that you can ride during those early entry times. And that's a way that you can skip the lines. Or Space Mountain is also offered in Genie Plus. And so that's the paid system where you're able to skip a lot of the, the line for Space Mountain. And paying for Space Mountain to me is worth it. This is one of my all-time favorite attractions it is so much fun. The music is fun. It feels so fast. You're just surrounded by stars. It's just beautiful. Space Mountain is sometimes transformed too, which makes it extra fun. They do Hyper Space Mountain, which is Star Wars. And for this year, Hyper Space Mountain is happening May 1st through June-ish. I think it's June 5th. So if you can catch Hyper Space Mountain, it's just a fun twist on this classic attraction. For Space Mountain, you need to be 40 inches or taller to ride. So it's a, it's about the same as Big Thunder Mountain. I personally feel like Space Mountain is a little bit scarier than Big Thunder just because it, it is completely in the dark and it does feel like you're going pretty fast. So if you have young children who are really afraid of the dark, just keep that in mind. However, it's not made to be scary. It's not made to be terrifying. But if you have a child that's afraid of the dark, just kind of prep them before, but just make it cool. Be like, hey, we're going to be blasting through the gas galaxies. We're blasting through space and that's a lot of fun. For accessibility, guests must be able to transfer. Now let's talk about the number four attraction you cannot miss at Disneyland. The number four attraction you absolutely cannot miss, do not miss this attraction. A lot of people would probably put this attraction as their number one at Disneyland and that is the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion, you guys. This is so classic. This is so incredible. The Haunted Mansion is something that you really should not miss, but I also recommend watching our Deep Dive Secrets Revealed video about the Haunted Mansion before you ride this attraction. But the Haunted Mansion, I'll give you a quick little rundown and, and a couple little history and, and facts about the Haunted Mansion because it's just fantastic. So the Haunted Mansion is located in New Orleans Square. It is absolutely beautiful. And Walt Disney knew that he wanted some sort of haunted haunted house at Disneyland. And when Imagineers were creating the Haunted Mansion, at first they made it look all like scary and dilapidated on the outside. And Walt Disney said, no, 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 no. This does not fit with the aesthetics and the, the look and the feel of Disneyland. It needs to be pretty and pristine. And he has that famous quote that said, we'll take care of the outside and we'll let the ghosts take care of the inside. And I think that was a brilliant idea and a brilliant thought from Walt Disney because it is is just iconic. You walk up to the Haunted Mansion and it's beautiful, right? And it's gorgeous to look at, but you also still know that it's haunted, but it, it fits right in. It fits in with the beauty of New Orleans Square, which is fantastic. Now, the Haunted Mansion, unfortunately, was not finished before Walt Disney passed away. And so there's a lot of confusion about what this attraction should be. I mean, for a minute, it was going to be a walkthrough museum of the weird attraction or like a wax museum, but it went into the hands of two Imagineers and the Imagineers kind of butted heads of what the Haunted Mansion should be, Mark Davis and Claude Coates. Now, Coates wanted it to be really creepy and scary and like horror, right? And then Davis wanted it to be more fun and more like Disney-ish. And so both of them kind of split halves of the Haunted Mansion and one did one half and one did the other half. I'm not going to tell you which one did which, but if you know, you can leave it in the comments below. Or if you're just guessing like, okay, what, what half of the Haunted Mansion is scarier? And then which half is a little bit more fun? And then you would be able to really see which Imagineer kind of focused on which uh, parts of the Haunted Mansion. Extra added treat about the Haunted Mansion is it gets rethemed every year. So from September 
through past the holiday season, you can see it as Nightmare Before Christmas, and it is a totally different twisted experience based on Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, and it's a lot of fun. The first time I wrote it, I was like, ugh, what have they done in the Haunted Mansion? But then I was like, well, let me try it again, and I wrote it again, and I was like, okay, and then I wrote it again, and I was like, okay, and then I wrote it again, and I was like, okay, this is awesome. Guests of all ages and any height can ride the Haunted Mansion, um, but guests must be able to transfer from their wheelchair or their ECB. When you're planning out your day to ride the Haunted Mansion, it can get crowded. I mean, this is a very beloved attraction. People really obsess about the Haunted Mansion. I have friends that have Haunted Mansion wallpaper in their bathrooms. The Haunted Mansion is a very, very, very big deal when it comes to Disneyland. If you go early in the morning, you're going to be able to walk right on because the line seems to be moving pretty quickly. Now, if it is the holiday version, if it is the Nightmare Before Christmas Haunted Mansion, the line can get completely insane. That's going to be an attraction you're going to want to ride first, like first thing in the morning. The Haunted Mansion does not have that early access, and so you're not going to be beating like the early entry crowds if you're getting there right at rope drop, but if you're doing the holiday Haunted Mansion, I mean, you want to get there and you want to get there fast because the lines can get long. But a good thing about the Haunted Mansion lines is you can pay to skip the line. It's included in Genie Plus. We are quickly approaching the number one must ride attraction on our list. We are at number three. The number three must ride attraction at Disneyland is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. You guys, oh my gosh, I love, I love this attraction. It is so sweet and it is so adorable and it is so cute. You have to ride this attraction. It is brand spanking new. It just opened up at Toontown and it came from Walt Disney World. So Walt Disney World actually had this attraction first. They had it in their Hollywood studios. And when I wrote it there, I was like, oh, mind blown. This is so cute. I, I adore it. I adore this attraction. So this is located in Toontown. It is a very popular ride right now because it is new. So when you're planning your Disneyland day, keep that in mind. Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway does have an individual lightning lane that you can purchase if you want to skip the lines. So a lot of the attractions I've been talking about have that uh, Genie Plus option, right? So the Genie Plus, you purchase Genie Plus for the day. It can vary in price. We have uh, videos breaking down everything you need to know about Genie Plus, and it includes uh, some select attractions at Disneyland. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is not included in that Genie Plus. You have to pay for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway separately. So this is called an individual lightning lane. The individual lightning lane can also vary in price, but it is a really good way to skip the lines if it's a super crowded day and Mickey and Minnie's gets super, super popular. I have rope dropped Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. That's another way to skip the line that I highly recommend. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is not included in that early entry. Uh, that the Disneyland hotel guests get. And so you're not gonna be battling those early entry crowds, but a lot of people that are in Fantasyland and Tomorrowland doing their early entry, they might be heading to Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway because it's not that far from them. But again, I have rope drop uh, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway and I got right through the line and right into the attraction. If you have to wait in line for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, that's not the end of the world either because the attraction line is so cute and there are a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of hidden secrets and details. We did again, all of our videos I'm throwing at you to watch, but we did a whole secrets revealed of just the line of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway that you can watch right up here. So it's a fun, interactive, darling um, line that you're gonna enjoy. As for the ride itself, you're going to love it. It's, it's a trackless system. Anyone can ride it. There's no height requirement, so even babies can ride it. It's pretty uh, smooth sailing, but there are some points where it's a little like herky-jerky, like when you're dancing in Daisy's dance room, but it's nothing too crazy. There's no serious big drops or anything like that at all. And the ride itself isn't super scary. However, the tornado room did kind of upset our son the first time he wrote it. He might have been about three years old. So it can be a little intense for some children, but they worked really hard to just keep this attraction cute and fun. Guests must be able to transfer from their wheelchair or ECV. And when you're planning your day to ride this attraction, keep in mind that Toontown can sometimes close early based on uh, the firework shows. But Toontown right now, it just was reimagined and redesigned and refreshed. It's adorable. The music in Toontown is really, really cute. I love this attraction. So definitely, definitely put Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway top of your list.
All right, now to talk about the number two attraction you must ride at Disneyland. The number two attraction you must ride and you absolutely cannot miss is Rise of the Resistance. Now I know, I know, I know, I get it. I'm gonna have people come at me and say that Rise of the Resistance should be number one and I'll give it to you. Like it probably should be number one on my list, but if you've been with Pro Park Goes for a while, you understand that my number one attraction never, never changes. So I, I get it. You can put this number one on your list, but for me, it is number two. But Rise of the Resistance is a full experience. I don't even like to call it an attraction or call it a ride because the whole thing is like a life-changing experience. It is so cool. Rise of the Resistance is located in Batu, Galaxy's Edge, or Star Wars Land. I hear a lot of people still call it Star Wars Land, even though its official name is Galaxy's Edge. And Rise of the Resistance is extremely popular. So this is the most popular attraction at Disneyland. It even beats out Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, even though Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is new. Rise of the Resistance is so good and so incredible and so well done. People just love it and they still flock to it. So Rise of the Resistance gets super, super crowded. It is actually not an attraction that I recommend to rope drop though. And let me tell you why. You can try to rope drop Rise of the Resistance. I've tried multiple times. I am rarely lucky with rope dropping Rise of the Resistance. I'll get all the way out there. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is, whoa, way in the back left-hand corner of Disneyland, right? You get all the way out there. You get up there to the cast members and they tell you, it has a delayed opening or, oh, it's not running right now. That has happened to me so many times with Rise of the Resistance. And then it's like, oh my gosh, what do you do? You're way out in the middle of nowhere. And then at that point, all the crowds are in and you're like, oh, I just missed out on this valuable rope drop opportunity. So I don't rope drop Rise of the Resistance anymore, but there are some ways that you can kind of beat the crowds with Rise of the Resistance. And one of that is the pay to play individual lightning lane. You can purchase an individual lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance is another one that's not included in Genie Plus. Is it worth it though? Yes. So for me, I would rope drop Mickey Minis, Runaway Railway, save on that money, and then use that money to purchase an individual lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance. Now, if you want to save money and you don't want to purchase it, you can still ride Rise of the Resistance. You don't have to pay to ride it. It's just pay to skip the line. And the line is, is pretty cool. Once you get to the uh, experience, the event, then it's just awesome. There are places in Rise of the Resistance where the experience starts and you're technically still waiting in line. You're not even in the attraction yet, but you don't even care. You don't even realize because it's just so cool and you are totally immersed in that Star Wars experience and it is just mind-blowing awesome. With Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, you need to be 40 inches or taller to be able to ride and it's a little bit more intense. So if you have children who are sensitive or they get nervous, it's not made to be completely terrifying. It's not made to like scare your pants off or anything like that, but it's just a more intense ride and a more intense experience. I mean, you are battling the dark side. Boom, boom, boom. That's, that's going to be a little scary, but it is such a cool ride. It's truly nothing like anything you've ever experienced before. You cannot miss Rise of the Resistance when you're at Disneyland. All right, are you ready to talk about the number one attraction you absolutely must ride when you're at Disneyland? Wait a second, have you hit that subscribe button? Have you hit that like button? Did you comment what attractions you love below? You did all those things? Okay, great. Thank you so much. I just wanna give you a little bit of love. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I love talking about Disneyland and attractions at Disneyland, and I just want you to have the absolute best time ever. Now, if you are going through a hard time right now, I want you to wrap your arms around yourself, give yourself a big deep breath, blow it out. <sighs> Tell yourself, I am amazing because we think you're amazing and we want you to know it here at Provost Park Fest. All right, let's talk about my number one attraction at Disneyland. My number one attraction at Disneyland is Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Oh, you guys, I love this attraction. It is truly incredible and it has held the test of time. When I ride this attraction, I feel like it's brand new, but it's been around since the 90s. 
Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye opened in 1995. It's located in Adventureland right next to the Jungle Cruise and this is a thrilling attraction. You have to be 46 inches or taller to ride this attraction. So this is one of the highest height requirements that Disneyland has and I highly recommend this attraction for children who are older, more mature, don't get scared easily because this is a very thrilling, intense, dark ride. You are completely trans transported into the world of Indiana Jones and it is incredible. A cool thing about this attraction is there are a uh, three, well, two, three, two, three, three Indiana Jones attractions for, ugh. there's three Indiana Jones attractions located in the world. So Disneyland Paris has a roller coaster type ride. Disney World had a stunt show, which was really fun. But the two, the main two are from Disneyland and then Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, we just have brand new Tokyo Disney Sea videos right up here that you must check out. There are a lot of cool uh, hidden details, secrets, and facts about Indiana Jones Adventure. When you enter the queue, your adventure starts off right off the bat. One of my favorite secrets and facts about Indiana Jones is when you first walk into the queue, look at the Jeep that's there, right? A lot of people just walk right by this Jeep. They never even look at it. They don't even take a second glance at it. And you guys, this Jeep is from the movies. This is from Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, how cool is that? There were only six of these Jeeps in the world and it is on loan to Disneyland from George Lucas himself. I mean, I would seriously pay to get into Disneyland just to go see that Jeep and take a picture of it. Another cool fact that I really love is when you go through the queue at first you're outside and you're going to see a lot of like snakes, pillars or statues of snakes, right? Then you enter into the temple of Mara. Uh, right when you pass the portrait of Mara, you're going to go around and you're going to see a obelisk in the center. You go around it and when you look at it, you can see kind of your fortune of what doom awaits you. So you, when you enter in, on that side of the obelisk, there are snakes and you were just in that like snake garden. As you go around, you're gonna see fire, you're gonna see like rodents and rats, and then you're gonna see spikes. And spikes is the direction that you go. And then when you're in line, look up and you're gonna see the spikes. So just, I mean, th like things like this are just completely covering the queue of Indiana Jones. And then the ride itself has so many awesome parts to it. And Indiana Jones was just newly uh, refurbished and refreshed. It really, really needed it. There were a lot of non-working parts at Indiana Jones and it just broke my heart because I'm like, this attraction is so cool and it all just needs to work. But now everything is working pretty well and they have some really cool new parts of this attraction that, that you've got to check out. And Indiana Jones is in this attraction. So you're able to see animatronic of Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, which, which is just the best version of Harrison Ford. I mean, Han Solo is great. I know I get it, but he's Indiana Jones to me. This attraction is pretty popular and the line can get really, really long. However, it is included in Genie Plus. So if you buy Genie Plus, this is a ride that you can reserve your Genie Plus for, or this is an attraction that I personally love to rope drop. So when I'm going to Disneyland, I'm kind of debating between, do I want to rope drop Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, or do I want to rope drop Indiana Jones? Guests must be able to transfer from their wheelchair or ECV to uh, get into the Jeep. If you're thinking about going to Disneyland, we work really, really hard to bring you the absolute best prices and deals and specials so you can make it to the happiest place on earth and save a lot of money. So to get the absolute best prices guaranteed at Disneyland, we've provided a link in our description below from Getaway Today. You can click that link, it sends you to their website and you can start building your dream vacation and save. Or if you wanna to talk to someone in person, you can call our friends at Getaway Today. It's 1-855-GETAWAY, just tell them that we sent you and they're going to treat you like family and help you out to plan the best possible Disneyland vacation. They help you out with hotels. They can help you out with transportation from the airport to the hotels. And then of course, help you out with the Disneyland tickets. They can even help you out with Genie Plus. So whatever you need with your Disneyland vacation, they're there to help you and then also help you save the most money. Okay, I can't end this video without talking about the Matterhorn. So the Matterhorn is an honorable mention on my list. I technically do think that it's a ride that you have 
have to ride because it's one of a kind. It's not at Disney World. It's only at Disneyland. So you really have to ride it. But the reason why it's an honorable mention for me is because most people that ride the Matterhorn, when they're done with the Matterhorn, they regret riding it because their back hurts. It is a uh, rickety roller coaster, but it's a ton of fun. And again, it's original. It's unique. It really is a blast. It's just an honorable mention on my list because, you know, what? I don't want you guys to get hurt. But again, at the same time, you really do have to ride it. All right, my friends, that is my list of the top 10 attractions you must absolutely ride when you visit the happiest place on earth. Now, Disneyland, they have a lot more rides than 10. So it was really hard uh, squeezing down the list to 10. But these were definitely my top 10 favorite rides. Again, let me know in the comments below what rides you would say you must absolutely ride when you visit Disneyland. I would love to hear your thoughts below. And if you want me to do a video about this over at Disney California Adventure, let me know in the comments below and I would love to create that video for you as well. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions and all of your messages asking, what should I do at Disneyland? What ride should I do? What are the first time tips? All of your questions are awesome and I love to be able to help you have the most perfect time at Disneyland. I hope you enjoyed it. Just make sure that that like button and subscribe button is clicked and I will see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Hope to see you at Disneyland. Yo, oh, yo, oh, a pirate's life for me. We pillage and plunder. We rifle and loot. <laughs> Drink up behind who's your home. What? <laughs> we weren't loved by our mommies and dads. Drink up me hard is your home. Yo ho. Does it say we weren't loved by our mommies and dad or we know. were loved by our mommies and dad? If it's not, that's so sad. <laughs> Yo, oh, yo, oh, a pirate's life for me.